God is my helper. God is love. God is my hope for tomorrow. God is the source of all life. God is my salvation, the holy and sovereign creator of the universe. Welcome to our summer season, First Steps on Southern Soul Chats. I'm your host, Dr. Miranda Ferguson. This summer, we will be delving into the foundational truths of faith that prepare us for the lifelong journey of following Christ. We'll be talking about who God is, who we are, and what His purpose is for humanity. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Now let's prepare our hearts, make space for God, and take our first steps into a deeper relationship with Him. All right, guys, we're in week four, also episode four of our uh, summer series. Um, And this week is uh, planting seeds. Now, I got to tell you, um, when we start the podcast and we record, we can hear the intros and the outros play because we record them. And there was something a little different about the intro this week because as I'm listening to it, (laughs) I actually had the thought I had no clue what we were getting into. (laughs) It truly was an adventure. Yeah. It, I was like, this is a journey like no other. Oh, my gosh. But just hearing the the people in the beginning, because these are people we know that we asked that question to, to quickly with the first thing that came to mind. And when we first started, I would just hear it and listen to it. And I'd just be like, oh, that's so good. But as we are progressing each week, like hearing them say those things, it takes on a whole nother meaning mm-hmm. to me now. Mm-hmm like a whole nother thing. So, hey, if you're new here, thanks for coming. (laughs) Thanks for uh, cranking it up today. Um, We are super excited to have you if you're returning and you've been with us. Uh, Thanks for coming back. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this week is planting seeds. So before I even uh, get into the planting seeds part, let's just back up real quick. So we started with the big G-O-D. So that's, you know, who God is, his characters, it's the character of God. Um, Really needing to have that understanding before you can really walk through the ideas and thoughts of faith or living faith. I mean, if you don't know who God is, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And we talked about the Trinity and that too. Right. Which and we covered all things. That's why it was a very God. long episode. <laughs> it's worth the two hours. Go listen. Just maybe break it up. And then we moved from that to tilling the soul, which was talking about how God created us and every, you know, the, our three parts. Um, uh, body, uh, spirit, and um, soul, soul, not soil, but soul, <laughs> um, <laughs> and how we're each, how each part of us is made in connection to the big God we just talked about. Yeah. And so then we, we landed last week, um, digging deeper and I know you're all going, yeah, I'm feeling a trend here, <laughs> but really last week was digging deeper into our inner being and and challenging some thoughts and maybe giving you some thoughts about um, how we function internally and, and mm. who we put on, who we put out that deserves to treat us certain ways or fix certain things or be certain things. And we really challenged that whole idea of living the humanistic life. Wants versus needs, inner right. needs, and who's responsible for meeting them and what our purpose is and right. who drives that purpose. Yeah. And so, so just a few small just, topics. I mean, <laughs> a little, little bit of light I mean, stuff. it's just some little things you need to know, right? Um, Can but, we cue the intro music again? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play that one more time. Okay? And then we're, we're digging into a really small one. This yeah, the glory of but God. let me say the before before we even jump into that, I, I just I don't ever shy away from telling on the podcast or doing little bonus materials about things that that are happening. But I gotta tell y'all, coming out of inner challenging inner challenges, uh, there were some inner challenges in me. I after we recorded the podcast last week, I I was so unsettled for days, and um. I prayed about it. I talked to my husband about it. And what I realized is it wasn't actually that I, I felt, you know, at first when you do things like this, you always say, okay, God did, did the words of my mouth. Yeah, did I say what you, did I say what you say? needed? Did I yeah. do something wrong? And of course, <clears throat> no one can ever know a hundred percent of everything they no, said was right. No. But what I realized is that I was feeling that battle against my own self about wanting to think of things a certain way. And it really kind of shook what I know to be true 
versus what I thought I was doing. And you start realizing I'm, I struggle with this all the time. And so I think the enemy gets in there too. Your own human nature kind of works against mm-hmm. you. And then the enemy's like, yeah, let's think about that. Are you sure it's real? You know, all that stuff, the questioning starts. So uh, definitely refining for me. Yeah. Yeah. And oddly enough, my <clears throat> husband is on for the first time and it was really, there were some things when we walked away that literally for me, in relationship with my husband, like it was a knockdown drag out inside of me. Mm. Like there were, I think I was telling Leah on the phone, I was like, it's not that it was like just spiritual warfare, but it was like, it was like refining with a little twist of that. And then let's sprinkle some, some of this in there. And so (laughs) there was like, I really spent the week after, but leading up to it, not thinking much about it, coming out of it being like, holy Moly, why did I open my mouth and do anything on a podcast? Like I just asked for trouble, right? Lord, I just asked for this. But no, I, it just was a, it was a struggle. Mm-hmm. It was a struggle. Um, not because I don't know who, I already know that my husband doesn't meet my inner needs, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're good there. That's good. But it's those moments where there are things going on and you defer to that. Yeah. Even though you, it's not what you really know to believe to be true. And so God did a lot of things where he was like, okay, see this? This is not an inner thing. This is a God thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. turns out they're all God things. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we do live in a culture that, that tries to fix everything with no regard for God. I mean, mm. you know, people... People all around us do not live with any regard for God. Even people in the church Mm. don't live with much regard for God. So it's kind of shocking when we stop and we take stock and we look at the way we're really supposed to live our life according to God's plan. And it's like, ooh. It requires the true (laughs) renewal of the mind that Paul talked about. Renewal of the mind. It's it's not a joke like well there was at one point y'all we're just being honest at one point jeremy and i were in the car we were going somewhere and i was fuming on the inside Mm -hmm. and i was talking to god while in fumes and i was like (laughs) but lord this is not an inner struggle like this is not something i'm trying to get in but i am so i'm just and i don't want to look at him or talk to him and i'm in it was just like the scripture came to mind about turning their cheek and i went really you're gonna do that now really i have to to do that right now (laughs) Yes. But it was, it was, I was having an inner thing, right? There's this inner thing with me and I'm trying to place it. Where does it belong? So normally mm-hmm. I would just enter it out of my head, but I'm going, no, Lord, I just came off this week. So you, you want to do this? Let's do it. Yeah. Want to do it, Lord? Let's do it. <laughs> and automatically he's like, turn the other cheek. And I'm like, you pick that one. <laughs> I don't want pick. to turn the other I cheek. Did, I did not want to give do him, the thing. Give him your, take your shirt off. Give him your back. Your yeah. 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 Coat also. So yeah. I hope yeah. I, I'm not. I would say I hope that our listeners didn't feel the same week, but then there's a part of me that goes like, if you're really in tune to this it's and you're really searching, like it was a perfect time to, for God to say, let me lay it on a platter for you. Yeah. Here you go and serve mm-hmm. it up. Well, and I just think about Paul's words, you know, I know what I need to do and I want to do it. And I love this with mm-hmm. my whole heart mm-hmm. and I want to do this, but there is this part of me mm. that cannot do the right thing. And, and it requires the power of the Holy spirit to do it. It just does. And, you know, I was thinking about, we talked about the wants and needs, but we didn't ever, I don't think say the word expectations. Mm. And I think that it gets mixed in there too. Yeah, We might like not expect another, we might, you know, not expect another person to meet every inner needs, but we might still have an expectation about who they're supposed Absolutely. to be or what jobs they're supposed to do. Their roles within your relationship. Yeah. And yeah. so really it's important for us to examine those things, especially as we go into this week, when we're talking about how to actually glorify God and what that is, is what is God's expectation which that. goes to planting seeds. And so if everything else was preparing you to get some things situated in your mind, I think that clearly those have led to this week. And I think going forward from this week, it's all like this. It, it's it's big concepts. It's big yeah. ideas. Yeah. Um, but planting seeds and, and the fact of my thinking that we take a seed and we plant it, and then we expect for it to grow and harvest. And, and we've been talking about trees a lot on this podcast this season. <laughs> um, but I was in my, I was out there tilling my own soul and pulling out all those 
dad gum tree roots that come from acorns and the tree this year dumped <laughs> acorns everywhere so in all of my beautiful flower beds I had these little sprigs of trees and <laughs> I'm mad I'm digging them dig- you don't know how much you have to dig to get those things out like so I'm digging them out and but I'm realizing in in the process of doing that that when we plant seeds, we expect growth. Mm. And I think it's crucial to what we're about to talk about, because I, I know for myself, just studying this, um, I've been overwhelmed. So I went from inner struggle, inner battle to switching topics and going to complete overwhelm and all of God. Yeah. A concept that a, a word, a concept that seems so basic, like, Oh yes, I understand that. And yes, I've heard about that. But then digging into it going, oh my gosh, this is what sprouts life. And when we plant spe- seeds, what comes from those sprouts, new life, new beginning. I, you know, I can look around my yard. I, I could probably have 18,000 trees from these little things I'm digging up everywhere. <laughs> um, we're not going to because I'm digging them up. But <laughs> when we plant this idea of today of glorifying God and we really walk through it and we really talk about it and we really do our best to um, bring you guys what we believe that we found through digging this week. Um, I really think that some, some of you, maybe the majority of you are just going to be like, Oh my gracious. Yeah. Because I, I don't know how you couldn't. Well, and you know, you know, scripture says that we know, we know the value of a tree by its fruit. Right. So if mm-hmm. we don't plant a seed that is rooted in the idea of the glory of God and the purpose of mankind to glorify God. Mm -hmm. Um, You're going to see it in the fruit really easily and it's not going to shine as brightly as it needs to. So it's, yeah, it's really important. And really, if you don't plant this seed and have an understanding of it, I don't know how you go forward and you can do anything. Like you said, the fruit, the the growth, it's like, it's almost like if you don't plant this seed and you don't, take care of this and cultivate this like we've got everything prepared for it like I feel like up to this point we've prepared you all to step into what we're about to talk about Mm -hmm. but if you don't accept it and take it and nurture it and have the things that you need to do your part then it's like I don't know what happens with your seed Mm. And what I think happens with your seed is not very good. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like when I first started gardening and all my seeds died. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I still have that happen. <laughs> or, the, or the fruit is bitter or, mm-hmm. or you know, yeah, whatever. Or it's really showy, but it produces no fruit. Yeah. All the things yeah. you don't want, right? Yeah. yeah. So this week is about planting, with the title is Planting Seeds, and it's um, pretty much humanity was designed to express God's life and that we actually were just made to glorify God. And that mm. you might think to yourself, well, that sounds pretty basic. How can y'all be talking about this is so <laughs> profound this week in your life of Christianity? Well, you better put your seatbelt on because it's pretty profound. And I'm going to go on and be a little step further, being honest. I really feel like a consumer this week I, um, <laughs> because I it is there's so much... There is so much. I mean, night after night, article after article, book after book. And the more at my brain, I mean, John Piper exploded my brain this week. <laughs> he left nothing. There's nothing left. He focuses on this a lot. It's his passion. Yeah, yeah. well, it's a, he does an amazing job at it. Um, so I feel like almost a consumer, like I will be taking in just like everybody else is. So I'm going to do my best to try to offer some insight and some things I found along the way. But um I just got to tell y'all, oh, <laughs> man, and we still have how many weeks left to go? I'm so tired. <laughs> if I'm honest, and my brain is like, yeah. can I please have a Sabbath? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, and if you, and like I said, in after this point, it just gets to, in my opinion, it, it just from here, once the seed is planted, it's just, it gets what you want to see you want to see growth and more growth and there's more and there's more so i'm just telling you if you thought the last three weeks were something you have no clue what the next seven weeks Mm -hmm, look like mm -hmm. (laughs) at all so anyway let's get to it first off our usual suspects are here we have leah dyer and we have debbie edmondson and this is our um panel our basic panel now i will tell you this after this next the next week we have a guest and i think from there on out we have like guests every single week we have some amazing people who've said uh, i really feel drawn to this concept and i really have some information i want to share here and they're all people that i just adore and have hold in high regards to what they think and Mm -hmm. what they speak on about god 
So this is pretty much going to be the last time you just get this little this little posse right here. <laughs> a little threesome. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to open up the floodgate and, and let God bring in people who um, he's just preparing their hearts and a message. And I am super excited. It'll be good. It'll be really good. So let's go into it. We're going to just start off like we have every week to make sure we all have an, a basic understanding of what we're talking about. And it's what is glory? So does anybody want to start off? Let's talk about <laughs> what is glory. <laughs> Okay, anybody? First, I'll go. Sure. <laughs> go for it, so, Miranda. I, I know that you guys have probably a little deeper, but just in scribbling around on what I was doing. So I just found that like in the Old Testament, the word for glory comes from a Hebrew word, which means weight or heaviness. And I know um, Debbie has some some things on that she talked about with us. Um, and the idea behind it suggests that there's a substance and importance to glory, right? But then if you look in the New Testament, the word, the word glory conveys the same idea. So um, a man's glory, it's like a man's glory is his good reputation, mm. right? Um, it is that about him, which is praiseworthy. Mm. So when the Bible speaks, speaks of the glory of God, it's referring to his worth, his honor, and his greatness. So when this word is used of God, we could say that it is, is his majesty or his supremacy mm. is in yeah. view. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, if we look at... Um, those those um, definitions, just to go back to it, kabod, and I think it's doksa is the Greek word, but mm-hmm. uh, kabod refers to this weightiness. Um, a, a good way mm-hmm. to think of this is like it is used for literal weight. Fat, fat. For fat, fat. Yeah, there's a story of a guy. <laughs> not, wait, not P-H-A-T. A guy who is fat, fat, yes. Um, but we also see it used um, to describe like weighty topics. Think about like you say what, what this person says carries weight. Mm -hmm. Um, this, this, uh, we need to weigh the options here. We need to think about, this is a heavy topic. So it, it does imply a weight, but it's not necessarily just a physical weight. It's, um, it, it bears meditating on it. It uh, it carries clout, uh, influence power with it. So when we look at it, um, in scripture, uh, I, I did a thing where I looked at the dictionaries of biblical theologies and encyclopedias of, of all the different uses of glory in scripture. And it actually kind of morphs a little bit from old to new Testament. It still shows up. Um, but you know what most people are f- familiar with, um, you know, natural objects are referred to as having glory. It usually refers to like brightness of, of the heavenly bodies, um, or, uh, the fruitfulness of a forest, or even in Job, the awesomeness of, uh, horses snorting, you know, the power and glory of, of that. Um, or even in Luke, uh, ornateness of expensive clothing. Okay. So it can be used to, to refer to natural objects. And then we also see it referring to human beings. This is kind of what you were saying. A lot of the times it refers to like a position, p- having a lot of possessions or strength or even long life. We'll see it, uh, described there. Um, and, uh, But we also see it referred to as like you crowned him with glory and honor in Psalm 8, 5, um, which might kind of point back to that more essential idea of the Imago Dei. Being created in the image of God means that we have some of the same um, authority, power, (laughs) dominion, uh, inheritance even um, that Uh, because we're in that family um, of God. So you can see that human glory being uh, viewed positively, you know, um, but it can also be viewed negatively uh, if somebody is going out for their own glory. Um, So they're, they're trying to express pride or independence from God. And then when we start talking about God and God's glory, it really encompasses all of that and more. You're going to see it referred to, um, as like the external manifestation of his being, things that have been like appeared or revealed, um, the, you know, the, the fire and the smoke um, uh, in, in the Exodus, um, the cloud at the top. You, you'll see it represented lots of different ways there. Um, and it also is usually attached to his kingly rule, his presence. Um, and sometimes it's it's present in like physical manifest, like a a natural event, like I said, um, uh, 
uh, or the, you know, him being in the tabernacle or the Ark of the Covenant, his glory is present there. Um, and in the New Testament, we're going to see it referred to like the coming glory returned to Zion and Mount, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that kind of covers all the different things <laughs> that I, that I yeah. could yeah. think so, of. I mean, I think the, the character of God, um, is expressed in all its its radiant glory um, because of his personal attributes of mm-hmm. compassionate, he's merciful, he's slow to anger, full of unfailing love and faithfulness, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but not in excusing the guilty, so he is just. All those things incorporate the glory of God. He is glorious because he is all those yeah, things. Yeah. And then he has created us um, in his image. So therefore, I, th- I mean, to me that I, when I thought about this um, glory of God um, and then it, that it meant the a weightiness. Mm-hmm. So it's almost as if it's a weightiness that falls on us to reflect, Mm -hmm. you know, it's so important because we're created in his image. And so we've got to sort of reflect that weightiness, that glory in our lives, reflect him in our lives. So it, it adds weight to our lives being that we take our lives seriously (laughs) because yeah, we're associated with him. Isaiah 43, seven says, bring all who claim me as their God for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. And then first Corinthians 10 31. So whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So that's what you're talking Mm -hmm, about here. mm -hmm. So basically what we're saying is that, you need to understand what glorifying God or glory is because the ultimate reason for who you are and what you do is to glorify God. Mm. That, that John, John Piper, uh, Debbie shared with us a video of John Piper doing a sermon. Um, really it was like a youth retreat, I think. Yeah, right? it, was a, it was a big, still retreat, a sermon. Yeah. It felt like a sermon, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he talks about that. He talks about glorifying God in every single thing you do and how this, this God is personal and he's glorious and that our hearts, ache for the ability to be able to glorify him. And yet there's people out there who can't figure out, which went back to inner, Mm -hmm. right? Inner needs, wants and needs. Right. Mm -hmm. We think our wants and needs are thus of what creation has to offer, Mm -hmm. but it's the creator. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love this. He, I read in something where it says John Calvin was correct when he said that creation is the theater of God's glory. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mm -hmm. because this is true, we exist for the glory of God. And just as the um, creation has been called to glorify God, so have we. And, and it goes on just to talk about, um, like, just how we, how, how do we, as people, and we'll talk about this, like, how do we, who are his image bearers, glorify him? Such a great, mighty being, right? Mm. Um, but like I said, I, just having that basic idea of, of knowing that all of the creation has one goal and one purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's to glorify God. He created everything in his glory. Everything that exists has its existence from God and for God. And I think, did we read Romans yet? No, Romans 11, 36. uh, For of him and through him Mm -hmm. and to him all are all things to whom be glory forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, that covers it. All things. I mean, I don't think, I don't see a comma. Is there else? Nope. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're done. He sums it up in just some words, a few little words in a, in a Bible verse, right? Um, but well, it's so important. And I think that's the thing like this week that hit me in these days I've been doing this is that my perception of God and the glory of God, even though I've been a Christian my whole life, I haven't always been a perfect one. <laughs> Got to throw that out there. Um, but I made God. I made God like, I know you're there and know who you are. And that's great. So stay right there. Mm. But I made God so small. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what's wrong in today's Mm. Christianity is that if you don't have the understanding of God, um, like Psalm 104, one, let all that I am praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, how great you are. You're you are robed with honor and majesty. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's if we don't have that 
idea, the heavens proclaim the glory of the Lord, the skies display his craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I struggled with this when I first was working on this lesson. Mm-hmm. So what are we, spo- what, what is the glory? Are, are we just supposed to walk around going glory to God, glory to God? <laughs> have you ever met Christians? I mean, I, I yeah, did every, in, yes. the, in the, in the, <laughs> yeah. in the seventies, you know, the, the Jesus movement, you know, you had people who thought, walking around saying glory to God, glory to God all the time was glorifying God. No, living your life to the glory of God. So, um, but first, if you don't have any understanding of how glorious God is and his creation is, then Mm. you're not going to be able to, to really go there, you know, and it says in Isaiah 6, 3, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Yes, yes. Um, I was reading um, A.W. Tozer's Pursuit of God this week, and man, this is like, he's like my soul brother, man. (laughs) Everything I read, I'm like, amen, amen. I was joking with Miranda, if I ever give her any of my books, there's going to be so much highlighting. She's going to wonder which lines weren't highlighted. It's like a rainbow (laughs) of wisdom. That's that's Leah's way of saying, read it all, Miranda. (laughs) Um, but, uh, revelation four eleven, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. And this is what he says. God formed us for his pleasure. And so formed us that we, as well as he can in divine communion, enjoy the sweet and mysterious mingling of our kindred personalities. He meant us to see him and live with him and draw our life from his smile. Mm-hmm. So if I'm being honest, when I was watching that Piper video, thanks, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the 40-minute Piper video, which was amazing. Uh, he's talking about glorifying God. And and so, you know how, like, sometimes you get a slap on the hand from God, right? Like, you get, like, a little, like, hey, you listen to this. So I call them Holy Spirit gut punches. <laughs> yeah, well, when you're in the middle of doing some other dig- digging stuff that's happening, and, and then you put this on top of that, right? There was, like, a real guilt moment, like a, like, guilt not in the way of, like, being condemned, but, like, a, hey, put these together. Opening your eyes. Yes. Yeah. So Open the about, eyes of my heart, how Lord. How about these two things together? Because God, because he says, glorifying God, this is Piper in his message, he says, glorifying God, like, in case you're not aware, it's like everything you feel, everything you think, it's everything you're doing. And he says, meaning like acting in a way that reflects the greatness of God. And I thought in that moment, he said, and the first thing I thought was, well, I feel like I, I say, okay, I'm supposed to be like Jesus, be like Jesus, be like Jesus. Mm. Right. But then it was like, um, no, sweetheart. <laughs> it's like, yes, Jesus was the human example and, and the love and mm. all the things he did. And he thought the examples and yes, but it's bigger than that. Like mm. everything you do, like Debbie said, if, you, if you're taking a nap, <laughs> If you're uh, having Ooh, um, that's glorious. Yes, <laughs> a glass of water, if you're in conversation, like everything should yeah. be yeah. the, the, the glory of God and Leah and I on the way over here, we rode together to come today and we were talking about Moses and how, mm. when he, he rests for God to reveal. And I said, you know, it must have been pretty powerful because, you know, Moses came down like beaming mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and she was like, yeah, like it was like, oh, my gosh, he'd been with God. He's radiant. And I said in that moment, I thought, wouldn't it? And I said to Leah, I was like, could you imagine what life would be like if we were radiant like that mm. all the time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if we just because we were sitting in the glory of God continually doing our part in a relationship with him. Mm. Like what if really we walked around always beaming just beaming from spending time with him and piper goes on to say you know he was great in grace power and wisdom and we should question ourselves and this is where i got in trouble we should question ourselves with like is what my feelings saying about my thoughts what i'm doing the whole thing is it reflect god's good grace Mm. Is it, it, it should solve. He said it should solve. God's glory should solve every problem mm. I have. Mm. And I, I sat there because the problem I was struggling with, with the, the internal stuff and the things with Jeremy and I, that we were just, you know, married couples. There you go. There's, Working there's through marriage. It. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's your marriage thing. Um, 
I was thinking about some of my behaviors and not so much mm. my outward behaviors, but my inward thoughts mm. and behaviors, the things I'd like to say, the things I'd like to do. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing so because true. fantasies. I don't ever do that, though. <laughs> They're laughing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, we're not going to go there, right? That would be a whole other podcast. But I, I was in that moment, God was saying to me, like, through the way you're thinking and feeling, towards this situation with mm. another person whom I created. Mm. Are right. you glorifying me? Yeah. And y'all, I stopped. I finished Piper. I stopped and put everything up and had to sit there. And I just wanted to cry. I was yeah. like, oh. Mm. <laughs> well, there's a verse. I can't remember where it is, but it's in Matthew. Um, where <coughs> where me. Jesus says, when you call someone idiot, um, basically you're condemning them yeah you know oh, i'm in big trouble and i was like now every time i say that and i do say it a fair amount of time usually yelling at the television um it's and it makes you stop and realize um why jesus talked about um you know if you're lost in your heart mm. it's just as the same as committing you know adultery or sexual sin if you uh, hate someone, it's like you're murdering them. I mean, our, if we spend, and I'm talking about myself here, if we spend all our time thinking about how upset we are or angry with something or dissatisfied or um, we might on the outside be able to fake that mm. glowy, radiant Christian thing, mm. but on the inside... You know, we're filthy, whitewashed um, tombs mess. full yeah. of dead men's bones. Yes. I think Jesus. And and so the glor- glorifying God is not just in what we do; it's also in how we think. You know how we act out what we think. Yeah. Not just <clears throat> telling yourself, "Oh, I shouldn't be thinking this way," which is which is a step, but then you take the next step and you think, okay, why shouldn't I be thinking this way? Yeah. You know? yeah and if you're listening to Piper, he says you shouldn't because God works all things to his yeah. good. And mm. why are you sitting here like a grumbling old <laughs> right. bat? And then you move to the next step and you say, how can I change yeah. like, Lord, why like, I'm yeah. thinking this way? Yeah. Lord, or show case, me. Show I mean, me. I've had many times yeah. where I've just gone, God, I can't. I can't fix this. So you're going to have to show me what I need to do to, you know, sometimes it's only a matter of doing your own part. You're not going to be able to fix, like you can't fix someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, There's things that they just have to deal with Mm -hmm. on their own with God. And if they're not walking with God, then that makes it even more complicated sometimes. So, um, you know, basically we have to, to do our part to glorify God in our thoughts and in our actions by, you know, in our actions, seeking how, how, how do you, how do I live like to glorify you, God in our thoughts? How do I think to yeah. glorify you, God? So, um, I'm going to go on a little train of thought here for okay. a second, because I think it, it'll dovetail nicely with what Sounds we're talking good. about. All right. So we think about that instance when Moses asked the audacious question to God, Show me your glory. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we think about what God's response was. Did he say, who do you think you are, you stupid, measly human? I have this joke. Okay. It might come across as blasphemous. (laughs) So forgive me, but it feels like a really important time to use it here. So, um, okay. I'll read. Usually I say to Miranda, there are times when God basically shows off, not from a nasty place or whatever, but a good place. And I say, it's like when God says, here, hold my beer. I'm going to show you, you know, (laughs) no, forgive me. I'm not implying that. So we'll say here, hold my Powerade. Okay. (laughs) Hold my grape juice. (laughs) Yeah. Hold my grape juice. But I feel like this is a moment where God says, yes, thank you for wanting to see this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for wanting to see who I am. The renewing of your minds. Yes. But here's, here's (laughs) what's cool about it. So nobody write me letters about that joke, but I... (laughs) And don't get upset that Lee and I say it all off to each other. (laughs) He knows what it means. We're showing this. But here's the thing that's cool about this. How can you reflect God's goodness if you don't know it? Amen. How can you reflect God's love and justice and mercy and responsibility and everything that he is if you don't know it? 
So Moses is at this place where God has just made this covenant and he's got this people that he's chosen to make his chosen people. And he says, I've chosen them. So my glory will be known. So they will, the world will see who I am. They will know it. And then Moses has a natural question. Okay. So show me your glory then. Like, who are you? Who are we following? And he says, well, this is a hard thing for you to grasp and you're only going to get to see part of me and you're going to have to hide in these rocks because you're going to need that, that support. You know what I mean? But then he passes it over and there he descended, he descends in a cloud when Moses is in the cleft of the rock and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So here he's showing a glimpse into God's heart. That passage I just read is from Exodus 34, five through seven. And, um, once Moses has this glimpse into the heart of God, he bows in worship and he asks God, draw near to these people, please pardon them. Please let's do this. If that's who you are, let's 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 get in cahoots together. Yes. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But I think it's important to understand this because um it's okay to ask God to show you his glory. Hmm. Um basically we can do that because of the work of Jesus Christ. I I it's not this I don't have to hide um to come into his presence and 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 this is illustrated in Philip um so Philip asks a similar question <laughs> in the new testament John yeah. yeah John 14 8 through 10 so Philip says to Jesus Lord show us the father and it's enough for us and Jesus said to him have i been with you so long and you still do not know me Philip whoever has seen me has seen the father so how can you say show us the father do you not believe I am in the Father and the Father is in me? So it's a rebuke, but it's not a nasty rebuke. He's just like, don't you get this? Um, so I was reading this article that was juxtaposing these two things. It's by David Mathis, um, and he's the executive uh, editor for DesiringGod.org, DesiringGod.org. And what I liked about this is he said, there's something really important to understand here, and that is that Philip saw God in a way that Moses would have dreamed of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He asked for it. <clears throat> yeah. But, but what I'm saying is he was walking with God, God in, in the, the flesh, flesh. Yeah. not right. obscured by a right. cloud for the people who were, for the people who were, um, in the camp, not hidden. The glory of God was not hidden by right. a veil or, I mean, we're talking about, so, so here's the deal. When we think about this, the old Testament gives great examples of the glory of God. Right. And then we see it start shifting and changing in the new Testament. It, he does it in a bit of a different way. And then honestly, when you look at revelation, he kind of uses some of the stuff that we saw in the old Testament. So you see, you see this whole arc mm. of who God is. Right. But then we get this understanding that because of Jesus Christ, we can witness the glory of God, that veil that's blocking the Holy of Holies, that veil that keeps people from being able to actually enter into the presence. The, uh, it was torn. It was mm -hmm. torn. Mm -hmm. So um, there's this scripture, and let me see if I can find it again. I just lost it. <laughs> He's talking about um, the glory of the new, the new covenant, okay? And this is in 2 Corinthians 3. And he says um, in 2 Corinthians 3, 12, therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We're not like Moses who had put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull for to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read and it has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. And then he says, even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil is covering the heart. So he's talking about the people who are still stuck and thinking about the law, rejecting Christ in, as God in flesh, basically. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. 
Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So now we have this ability to ask God to show us his glory, bold faced in front, recognize <laughs> that it's accessible to us and to, to get better and better at reflecting his glory. Yeah. And I think that's, how do we, how do we glorify God? You know, is it, like I said, at the beginning, I was like, do we just walk around saying glory to God? Glory to God? No. <laughs> or singing worship songs 24 seven. Yeah, no. And I think, I think, um, I think it, that, you know, just as I hear you talking about that, I think about Jesus coming in the form of a man, mm-hmm. you know, wearing, you know, sandals and <laughs> being in dirty, sandy streets and living among the poor, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, so that is not what you think of as showing the glory of God. You think of it as being, you know, the the pictures you see in Revelation of the, you know, the jeweled, you know, everything. So, I mean, to me, I, I, I think there's got to be something in here that God was basically going back to the garden view of what the glory of God was. And in the garden, uh, Adam and Eve walked with God. And that was, they <sighs> saw, they were <laughs> surrounded by the glory of God because the glory of God is in his creation. The glory of God in his, is. They were living the glory They of God were living with the pre, glory of pre-fall. God. Pre-fall. Yeah. Pre-fall. They were sharing. Pre-fall. They were yeah. sharing. They were right. sharing in the glory of God. Right. So I think, I think it's not so much as this idea of always being sort of, you know, we used to joke about all the old movies and Jesus was always like walking around with these like sort of glassed starry over eyes. starry <laughs> eyes, you know, that, and you, you know, so you think of, of the glory of God as being something unreal mm. and it's not unreal because he says uh, in first Peter four eleven, Peter, who certainly knew who <laughs> Jesus was, yes. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory Mm. to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. So I don't think it's saying that we have to like walk around if we haven't worked up a way to show that like, you know, oh, look at that person. They're kind of glowing. You know, <laughs> um, you know, it's it's walking in whatever purpose God has called you to do with your life and with every ounce of every, you know, brain cell and, you know, and beating it's, heart. That and it's doing so within the same the same um I lost the word. Sorry. It's doing in the same posture that Adam and Eve did. They, yeah. they had to, they had a free will, mm-hmm. right? They, mm-hmm. they had that, but yet the full pre-fall, keep that in mind. They were invited to solely let God meet their needs, right? They yeah. chose to trust him. They chose to depend on his resources yeah. and they chose to operate under his direction. And so Adam and Eve manifested is what it says in the living in Jesus, Adam and Eve manifested God's character, will and life glory in parentheses there to each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I, uh, so I, this week, both of you got a phone call after this one. I listened to a, (laughs) I can say life changing podcast, Bible project, put out a podcast. They had a guest author on, um, her name was Dr. Haley Gorenson Jacob. She wrote a book and she, she studied the episode is called destined for glory. This blew my mind because basically what she talks about is that when we think about the uses of the word glory as like domain, um, or the ability to rule the weight of rule, the ability to show your power and your goodness through whatever you're in charge of. Basically she talks about how we need to look at that language from Genesis And understand that part of the glory of man was that we got to share Mm -hmm. 
in that. So it was about when we, when we tended the garden as Mm -hmm. God instructed us to do, when we interacted with each other in Eden, when we interacted with him, with creation, it was all done in a way that inherently glorified God because they were in unbroken relationship at that Mm -hmm. point. And what she talks about is, um, that, that the, when the fall happened, we, we lost our ability to do that, you know, um, on our own, um, in a way that glorified God. So all this dominion we had, uh, we, then we start using it to our own ends. We start it, creation starts ruling us. Death is now in charge of us. We go under the dirt af- instead of being made from mm-hmm. it, you know, but what she did that just blew my mind is she talked about how Jesus coming, she's talking about Romans eight and this idea that we're made into the image of Christ instead of the image of God, it, that the language changes. And she's talking about why would we do that? But what it is, is that God sent Jesus as the fully human manifestation of what it means to be human and holy so that we could Mm -hmm. watch the personage of Jesus and we could learn how Mm -hmm. to glorify God just like Jesus did. Right. And, and that's pretty powerful. And yes, I think he had something, uh, he certainly had something that drew people to him because I mean, you know, it, it says, come follow me. And they just dropped everything and followed him. And, you know, I mean, so there's, there is something to that. Well, even Peter, when the nets are full, he's like, okay, I'm unclean. Let's go. You know? (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think there, there have been people, I think, um, who have walked with Christ in such a manner that they did have that charisma that's similar. You no, know? I think most of us have um, probably seen someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Billy Graham, William Wilberforce, Don Piper. <laughs> <laughs> She's I'm, sorry, girl. I'm, on, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm Piper kick this week. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, some of these people, uh, and maybe it was part of their creation gift you know i think with wilberforce it was he Mm -hmm. was created this unusual kind of person Mm -hmm. that drew people Mm -hmm. to him Mm -hmm. and then when he became a believer he turned that all over to god Mm -hmm. you know and so you do have different personalities i'm a sort of black and white type personality well isn't that the true meaning of like giving your gifts back to god yes like if he created you to be this charismatic right, human right. that draws people and people want to be around you and then you're on fire for God you are you have that glow it's, you have it's glorified out. God that then, is the epitome every, of it <laughs> then every then you, whatever you're saying people are drawn to it because they're drawn to you well that's a part of God's plan for who you were yeah so we say this idea of like you said wanting to be more like Jesus but understanding now that we do after if we didn't before now that we've talked about the Trinity the oneness of them mm. that, that mm. being like Jesus is not a small thing right it's it's not right. And you know, mom, you were talking about their dirty feet. And it, while I was preparing for this, I was really struggling. So I'm a person, I don't struggle with awe. I'm in awe of God constantly. I'm kind of wired that way. Someone I was reading was saying there's like kind of two people. Some people just inherently see it all the time. Other people have to look for right. it to appreciate right. or study it. And, um, but I had a couple ideas that kind of popped in my head and I didn't know what to do with them. And then I listened to that podcast and all of a sudden it all started to fall into place. But one of the stories that God placed in my heart was the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. So we're looking at, at Passover and really this is told in, in multiple different um, gospels. Um, but basically you've got this time of Passover. It's, it's around the same time when... Um, you know, he's basically the betrayals happening, getting ready to happen. You know, Judas has decided to betray um, Jesus. They're having the last supper together. And we have this image of um, Jesus washing the disciples feet. Okay. Well, this was the, their feet were close to where they eat. They, they walked in sandals all day. They were dirty. They were disgusting. This was usually a job for servants to do. And, Jesus is having this meal with them. He's sharing all these nuggets of wisdom, all these beautiful things. And none of them thought to wash anyone's feet. And Jesus starts washing feet. And Pete, Peter is actually offended by it. He's like, don't you dare, <laughs> you know? Um, no, and Jesus actually says in John 13, 8b, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Mm. So what we see here is Jesus humbling himself 
and giving himself to the disciples. And he's, he does it in multiple ways. He washes their feet. Then he starts talking about, this is my, my body and my blood broken and shed. Okay, this is, he's explaining to them he's about to die. He's, he's giving them basically spiritual cleansing by doing this. He's saying, this, you, you know, I'm, I've, fought, I've given you this example. This is what you need to do. So we see this servanthood, this forgiveness, right. this, this love. Okay, but here's the great juxtaposition. So there's the fully perfect, glorified human and God, Jesus. Okay. And you know what the disciples do next? They start arguing over who's going to sit in the place of glory next to Jesus when he dies, when he goes back to the Father. Yeah, I miss it completely. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, and, and it's hard to tell exactly what order all that happened. And so maybe they were talking about that before. We don't, it's because mm-hmm. they're in separate gospels. We yeah. don't have a yeah. straight through, but it, we know it's all in the same time because the stories line up and the, the Passover season. But here's, there it is. There's the juxtaposition mm-hmm. between what it looks like to be a glorified human that's been made glorious by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's been washed clean, who has the ability to be holy, that has been restored to some semblance of what we had in Eden, and the person who is out for self-glorification. Yeah. Um, and, and so they were with him. It's nice to know they did things like yeah. that. <laughs> Makes me feel a whole lot better after we got that. Yeah, they were with him. They well, were with him. So here's what's crazy. Um, I'm I love the show, The Chosen. Yeah, right. I'm just. I mean, clearly, I know the what's fluff from not. But the last episode I watched, I'm a couple behind. But the last one I watched, they portray that moment. Yeah. They don't do it at the Passover, though. They do it differently but well they argued multiple times the, well they had been arguing. the sons of thunder their, yes. their mother at one point and matthew comes up and she's like so which of my sons is going to be next to you jesus and he's like are you serious yeah they're ema <laughs> they're ema yeah. right so they're way to go so Mom. in in the first time in this particular <laughs> I would setting be right in my eyes <laughs> well they do they're like we need to ask you jesus we need to ask you a question yeah. like we need to ask you a question right and if y'all, if you ever just wanted to picture what Jesus's face looked like, because you can't see our faces when we talk, <laughs> if you go to that episode and you watch their his face, his fa- it's like I, when I saw it, it, it's like a face of you've got to be kidding me. Who are these morons? How do they not know better? <laughs> Which one of them do I slap? I want to go cry in a corner. Yeah. Like it's this, yeah. this it's, it's, if you thought about that way a but lot yeah, If you us. think of your posture as being up, it was that he had a sunken in like a, you've got to be kidding me. But let's think about this because this mm-hmm. is interesting. If we think about the word glory as referring to a rule or a dominion, they were wanting a political ruler, a king right. to yeah, come they in still and avenge. Even after all that talk, they so didn't get it. They're thinking, I want to have a throne next to your throne. They're thinking, yeah. you know, they don't understand that his kingdom has no end. This is a different, yeah. this is a different thing completely. Right. His, the way he rules is not the same. And so it's important for us to understand that when we want to assign like a human trait to God's glory, when we want to say, well, gee, that's really needy of God to want us to worship him all the time. No, 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 no. Yeah, and that's the, that's the, that's the feeling I had with that word just seems so mm. hard to understand. But then wait a minute, you know, this is the creator of the universe. I guess he is worth that, you know? <laughs> It's like, uh, why did it take me so long to figure out that, you know, but we're so, um, we're so prone to ju- being judging everything. And then you go and try to think you can judge what God deserves well, like and what he doesn't deserve. <sighs> talk about a Holy Spirit gut punch. There was one time where I was really frustrated. I can't even remember what it was with. But I was on my little righteous high horse, you know, in my head, not in person, not loud, but in my head, which is just as bad, right? And, and then as God we learned today. And then God pops the scripture. I don't remember how, but he pops the scripture. You will be judged at the same standard that you are judged or that you judge others. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> You know, let me go sit down in the corner over here for a little yeah, while. Yeah. But yeah. so I think this is interesting. We think about that idea that if we have like 
um, that separation from understanding what God's version of glory is, right? It, that thing that keeps us from entering into the Holy of Holies, basically. Um, it's, it's hard to glorify God in our, in our lives and in our actions because we do it from this place of self. And something that blew my mind that Tozer said when I was reading today in that same book, The Pursuit of God, is he talks about it. We need to think of it almost like we have a second veil. The veil in the temple has been torn. We can enter into the Holy of Holies. But then there's this veil that's inside of us. And he says it's like made of flesh and blood. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and he calls it the, the veil of, um, of self, basically, mm-hmm. the self-life. And so he says, so I'm bold. I'm going to name out of which this inner veil is woven. It is woven out of the fine threads of the self-life, the hyphenated sins of the human spirit. They are not something we do. They are something we are. You talk about the inner needs. You couldn't Mm -hmm. get past that. You are frustrated, right? And therein lies both their subtlety and their power. So here it is. Here's the things that veil us, that separate us from understanding the glory of God and portraying the glory of God. To be specific, the self sins are self-righteousness, self-pity, self-confidence, self-sufficiency, self-admiration, self-love, which that one's going to upset some people, (laughs) and a host of others like them. They dwell too deep within us and are too much a part of our natures to come to our attention till the light of God is focused upon them. And he goes on to talk about how the problem that's even worse is that there's some in the body of faith that actually see those attributes like the Pharisees and think there, there is the example of the glory of God. And they're missing the point. That basically, self can live unrebuked at the very altar. And he says it can watch the bleeding victim die and not be in the least bit affected by what it sees. It actually seems to feed upon orthodoxy and is more at home in a Bible conference than in a tavern. Self is the opaque veil that hides the face of God from us. It's pretty hard. Yeah, I think next week uh, we'll be talking about a lot of those issues in yeah. uh, when we talk about the the two trees in the garden. But here's the deal through Jesus, that self gets crucified with Christ. This is the beauty of it. Yeah. All those things that stand in the way, um, they, they're counterfeit, but we still have to die to self. We still have to die to self every day. Yeah. And I think if you're motivated by bringing God glory, C.S. Lewis talks about it in the weight of glory. um, And I really love, that's probably my favorite part of the whole thing. He, He said, you know, you think of a child, that's so eager to please their parents or their teacher or, you know, someone in a place of authority. They don't, they don't think of it as something bad. It brings great deep joy to please them and to see the look on their parents' face when they're proud of them. And that through what Christ accomplished on the cross, we get to experience that. And, and the way people discuss glory you know, there was a long time where they talk about glory, glory, we're going to heaven. And that is one of the ways that that mm-hmm, word is used. Mm-hmm. But this is not a glory that's just in the There's future. A right. name written up in glory. <laughs> and it's mine. <laughs> yes, it's mine. But that's the idea here. It's not just a future glory. It's a present glory too. And Jesus talks about that a lot. And, and basically, if you read John, that glory language is all through it, particularly chapter 13 on. He is talking about how there's new glory. There's different glory. My glory is going to be shared with you. You're, they're going to reflect the glory that I reflect. So just because we have this veil of self doesn't mean it can't be ripped to shreds by the blood of Jesus well, <laughs> and, and, and we and, can't pursue him. And that sermon by Lewis was, was entitled, <laughs> Wait, yeah, glory, the weight which of glory. I realized later when I, I watched the other or listened to the podcast. Was it the podcast from? It was another a Bible, Bible League, project. Uh, no, Bible another project. Bible project yeah, podcast on glory, on weight, on the idea of weight. The glory is the weight. <clears throat> so, what is the weight of glory? I think the weight of glory is us realizing that um, in order to walk with God and be, you know, in His glory. We, you know, we have to be aware of who he is, what he's created, mm. what purpose he ha- has made us for, 
and live out that purpose. And I, and I do like at the end of the, the sermon of the, by C.S. Lewis, so at the end of our lives, we will hear those words. Well, well done. done. Mm-hmm. My good and faithful, faithful servant. And I think... And know, it'll be a glory we deserve at that moment. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that we've endeavored. We've not always done, you know, we fail, I fail every day at one way or another, but, but he knows our heart. He mm-hmm. knows that we're endeavoring. Um, it, it says, uh, well, Jesus said it in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. Mm. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Mm. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. That's the purpose of it. Yeah, that's the purpose of glory, of glorying God, glorifying God is living our life to his glory so that everyone will praise our heavenly father. Which is really, I have a, like a thing here. I saw in, um, ask all's all to the glory of God. And he says, how about, and you can tell this is old because it talks about Sunday school. It says, <laughs> how about you bring up this question in your next, in your next Sunday school meeting class? Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll bring that. Let's speed that up to current day in your next small group class. How about you say, <laughs> what kinds of things can we do to glorify God? And, Pretty much you're going to get the same answers like worship, witness, acts of kindness, uh, mercy, etc. Right. Mm. And he says, while these are all very true, it's just too narrow. Mm -hmm, It's mm -hmm. just too narrow. He said, God calls us to glorify him in all that we do. Yes. Therefore, whether you eat or you drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. First first Corinthians 1031. Just looking at that. The apostle (laughs) Paul calls us to consider our responsibility to glorify God in all that we do, not just in our spiritual Mm. activities of life. And he says, he goes on to say, there are two main focal points in this verse. Our doing, yeah, because and that God's whole list, glory. that whole list was full of spiritual activities. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, is that how how uh, how much of our life do we do those? Well, that's spiritual hiding. Activities? That's hiding the light under a bushel, <laughs> yeah. right? When it says all all of our doing is to be with a view to God's glory, yeah. a city on a hill can't be hidden. Yeah, mm-hmm. it says that's creatures designed by God and for God. We are obligated. I love that. It's not, hey, we. I'm asking you. Hey, I'm requesting. No. It's saying it's we are the obligated to <laughs> the bring glory of to glory God. glory yeah. is an obligation. It really is an obligation that falls. But then Jesus enables us to do it because his yoke is easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, so it basically we're, what we're pretty much saying is like, hey, this is what's involved. Mm. This is what it means. Right. And here we go with Piper. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's dedicated his, most of his ministry to this exact topic. So he's a good one to reference so, here. So, this, so Piper says the Bible. Bible also instructs us on how and when we are to give glory to God. We are to glorify him in our inner lives and our bodies. Here we go. Aren't those two? These are yeah. two things that we've already talked about. Body, recently. soul, and spirit. It says, for you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body mm-hmm. and in your spirit, mm-hmm. which are God's. First Corinthians mm-hmm. 6, 20. Mm-hmm. With our praise. So another way to glorify God is with our praise. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. That's Psalms 50, 23. Mm. Through our works and our daily life, so your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm-hmm. Matthew five sixteen. And here comes one for you, Leah. In our suffering. Yes. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. First Peter four sixteen. Even death. As we learn from John's commentary about Jesus' predictions of Peter's death, this he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God in John 21, 19. So Christians, all of you Christians out there, and all you thinking about being Christians out there, here's the deal. Our purpose, our obligation is to glorify God in everything we do. That is our purpose. That is our goal. That is what we are here for. Yeah, and I think, too, um, we have to remember that the ultimate the ultimate glory that was restored to man came through Jesus's death. So when Jesus talks about his job that he's going to do, the glory that he's going to do (laughs) is he's going to get pay the ultimate price. And I think it's really beautiful too, because when you read the the prayer that he prays about that, um, he's saying, you know, I, I've used the glory you gave me and I've tried to glorify you in everything that I've done 
and I, I want you, you know, I'm trying to give that to them so they understand it. And then he says, and will you give it back to me so I can return back to my place of glory? So before he's even completed the work on the cross and resurrected from the dead, he's already looking to be restored, but it comes through pain and suffering for, for Jesus, you know. Um, <laughs> Piper again uh, talks about um, the two main challenges um, that Satan uses to diminish glorification of God in our lives um, by causing us to value something more than we value God is pain and pleasure. So there's a tendency here. I can speak for this. Um, you know, uh, I've been praying for the freedom from the fear of pain. I'm very sick. So pain is a normal part of my life. Um, some of the worst pain I've had in months happened while I was trying to prep um, for this podcast. So there's someone showing his hand right there. Um, when I'm in that pain and I'm remembering that the, the secular hierarchy of needs versus how God defines them, all I want in that moment is comfort. That's all I want. I want physical comfort. I want physical comfort more than I want anything else. And Jesus teaches something different. Mm -hmm. He says, you want me more than you want physical comfort. And that's a really hard thing to swallow. Um, it can be very, very challenging um, to reprogram um, your body, your spirit, your soul. And I think here's the deal. It's not that I stop feeling pain, although sometimes God does give that. Sometimes mm -hmm. he will take pain away. Um, I've had times where it was so severe that I went numb. And um, my doctor's like, um, that's not supposed to happen. I'm like, well, I needed it to stop. <laughs> it was, and my body took care of it. Like God designed <laughs> right. my body. So, but, and I'm not like a proponent of that. But what I'm saying here <laughs> is that um, if I choose in that moment when the very deepest desire is just for it to stop, to trust God, mm -hmm. I am proclaiming God's sovereignty and goodness, mm -hmm. I am saying, even if I will still follow, and I'm not doing that to self-glorify here. I'm just using it as example because this is the way that God has refined me so much. And it's constant. And actually at this point, you know, maybe one day I'll be healed. He's, he's promised it to me. Who knows when it's going to happen? It might happen in heaven. I don't really know. But if it keeps my eyes fixated yeah, on the right thing, right. then I'll stay in pain. Like, whatever it is. But, um, you know, it's, it's important to understand this is not just when you feel good, when everything's going good, it's easy for us to pray, you know, and I mean, to praise when, when we feel great, it's easy for us to glorify how good God is when everything's going our way. It's a lot harder to do that when we face the trials that we have been promised in scripture yeah. over and over again. Yeah, Tom, I think I'm saying his name right. Y'all know I can't pronounce things worth a flip a doodle. <laughs> I like the glorifying. <laughs> glorifying. Glorifying. Yeah, we, I'm trademarking that. It's good. <laughs> and Tom Astall, he says, one of the biblical promises that few people like to claim is the one that the Lord Jesus himself gave to his disciples the <laughs> yes. night that he was betrayed yes. in the world. This world. You will have many tribulations. He said, you will have tribulation. John mm. 16, if you'd like to look it up. Mm. Whether claimed or not, that is like one promise that will be inevitably kept for every single person. All you have to do to see it fulfilled is keep living and keep being in relationship with people. Mm -hmm. the, fall brought dis the fall brought disorder into the world. And with that comes hardship and suffering. That something that's it, it's it was, it was right there, and mm -hmm. I'm going to use a, a argument that it may sound trite to a lot of people, and so I recognize that, and I apologize if this hits your spirit in the wrong way right now because I know how you feel, but I have been in very very low places because of suffering, and it magnifies how good and beautiful God is. I know that sounds like a really trite thing to say. But when you are faced in the, the face of suffering, of oppression, of all of these things, the, the weight and the ugliness of sin and the consequences, your own sin or the sin of others, or just the sin of Adam and Eve has on your body, on your life. When you see a glimpse of the glory of God in the middle of that, that light is a lifeline. It is the brightest thing in the room and it shines brighter than everything else. 
And so there are times where we need that healthy dose of awe. I have to be you, my own, you know, those things that I was ta- that veil that, that, um, that Tozer talked about has to be torn up for me to really get a glimpse of who God is. You're saying it's because you're stubborn or something? I'm super <laughs> stubborn. Yeah. My, my, you heard my it mother here speaks. First. You heard it here first. Folks. <laughs> I, and I think that sometimes it's self-reliance. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's, that's. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, there's lots of different things. Like when I said before, I kept saying, God, I'm trying to be strong. I'm trying to be strong. And he's like, I am yeah. not impressed with your strength. Yeah, I like, know. If you're, if it, it's, I think it, in some ways it's harder for <clears throat> people with, you know, very strong personalities, very, you know, to humble themselves. Nobody at this table knows a thing <laughs> yeah, about this topic. Them. The three musketeers to, of strength. We're speaking to, to other people clearly. in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Yeah. You know, we don't lift, need to lift ourselves up. <clears throat> well, it's it, so in Sorry. what I was reading about Credian what we're talking about, it, it says, you know, when we talk about God's glory, like the opposite of that mm. is to reject the Father, yes, in the mm. Father's creation, and so it says, sin is the rejection of God's glory. It actually goes back to the verse that you talked about, and we had to talk about Romans and looking at Romans differently. Yeah, and this really goes along those lines, and it says, you know, all of this, all that we're talking about, and in, in the opposite, and in, in all that is what makes sin so hateful and, and just mm. destructive. Because as Paul describes in Romans one, he says in verse twenty one, although they knew God. They did not yes. glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, mm. but became um, f- uh, futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Yeah. So they knew the glorious God, but rejected that knowledge, falling, choosing to follow empty thoughts and foolish desires rather than glorifying him as God by aligning their thinking and affections and living with the truth and reality of all that he is. Yeah. They became fools choosing to believe lies rather the truth and exchanging the worship of God for the worship of creation. That's, it goes back to what we were talking about before yeah, about our thoughts. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was interesting in this um, book we're studying, The Living in Jesus, they conclude this chapter <clears throat> With the process of glorifying God includes, <laughs> we receive a thought from the Spirit, mm-hmm. we process a thought, <laughs> we choose to submit our will to the Spirit's direction, mm-hmm. we carry out that action empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So that's sort of the, what did they call it in the book? Something, the continue the... Process. A healthy relationship cycle yeah, with God. a relationship <laughs> cycle with God. So basically... You start. It's and and that was what Romans itself just said. It yeah. starts in their thoughts. Yeah, it starts in their thoughts. So you can, you can live, in and and not tell anyone mm-hmm. what you're really thinking, and you're still, you know, in in rejection of God. Well, and thinking, he knows. Yeah, but, <laughs> and I'm thinking about in the Old Testament too. Was it Samuel who who was it Samuel that prayed and. Like he was found out because the glory of God was on his face after he prayed. And but oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in mm-hmm. the fiery furnace, the glory of God was shining off of them when they came out. So it it is an inward change that happens if you're really seeking mm-hmm. God in the private in the private time. It it doesn't just stop there. It shows it it shines mm-hmm. elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um. There was a there was a uh, as we kind of get into what it means to glorify God. Um, it, uh, there was a great resource I found that I thought was really interesting. Um, it was, it was printed in, um, 1692 Hmm. by a Puritan, Thomas Watson, a body of practical divinity. And he, there's this list that they have of 17 ways to glorify God. Oh, that's cool. And I was reading them and I thought these are really, really good. Um, so I'm not going to read all 17, but um, one thing I thought was interesting is he says, we glorify God when we aim purely at his glory. John eight fifty, I seek not my own glory, but the glory of those of him who sent me. So it's one thing to av- advance God's glory, but it's another thing to aim at it. Mm. God must be the ultimate end of all of our actions. So we think about this. Even Piper, to go back to our buddy today, talks about how you can drink a glass of orange juice to the glory of God, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every the moment's tree, holy. The, the orange, and then the orange yes. is the from the tree, and then we're going to squeeze it and cut it. <laughs> well, the orange f- juice is good, y'all. <laughs> the, the, fa- 
fact that we have senses to taste right. it, the fact that uh, yeah. something yeah. grew out of the earth that we can enjoy, yes. the All fact from that a seed being yes. planted. And there you go. Yes. But it had it has vitamins in it to nourish our body. It it um we can share it with other people, you know. What um, an amazing circle. Yeah, I mean, so another one he mentions, we glorify God when we sincerely confess our sin. Um, so there's a Hebrew phrase um, for like confess and tell me the truth, okay? And it's used um, in the New Testament and in the Old Testament that says, give glory to the Lord God of Israel. And this is a phrase they used to use when the, um, when the blind man is healed and he's being questioned by the people in the synagogue, by the, the ruler, they ask him, give glory to God and tell us this. <laughs> and look at what Jesus did. Like, think about this. The phrase is testify to the truth. He's been saved um, from blindness. They asked him why is this, surely there was some horrible sin his family did that he's blind. This is the one where he spit and right. made mud, made mud, mud, mm-hmm. mud dirt, dirt, dirt yeah. to cleanse the eyes of this guy. And he said, and they say, why is he sick then? And God says, because I'm going to be glorified. So isn't it interesting that then when he's being questioned, they use this familiar turn of phrase, give glory to the God of Israel and tell us the truth. And he's mm-hmm. like, I can tell you the truth. I, I was blind and now I see (laughs) like, so he he really is giving glory to the Lord. But I think it's interesting. That idea of confessing something Mm -hmm. even gives glory to God. You talk about give it back to him. Like you're giving, you're you're giving your sin, your issue, your struggle back into his hands. Yes. You're pointing him. You're pointing back at him. Right. Yes. Yes. So I thought that was really interesting. And then there was one other one. Um, we give glory to God when we work out our own salvation. When you spend time thinking through these things, processing, fixing your eyes on him, trying to ask him to open the eyes of mm-hmm. your heart, you're glorifying God. Um, and, and, they, and he does have one about walking cheerfully, but I think it's not in the trite way that we think of. No, it's that when somebody sees what you're in and they still see you pursuing faith or, or they still fi- see you finding joy, it's a testament to the goodness of God because it doesn't make sense that there would be joy in that moment. Yeah. And you wonder, where is that coming through? We glorify God when we stand up for the truth, um, uh, when, we, when we work to honor him. This is where the idea of praying for your food comes from, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, thanking him for what he's done, giving him glory for that. So I just thought, you and know. these are all so simple, but yeah, yeah, even as she's reading them off the list, I'm just going, I just don't think of those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, they seem yeah, so simple. I think simple it's the word and, glory, like mm-hmm. I say at the beginning, it threw me off, uh, you know, yeah. because th- we, we are to glory in everything mm. that God made mm-hmm. and everything that he does in our life, mm-hmm. even even in how he speaks to our internal thoughts and spirits, yeah. we give him the glory because, you know, we as we studied the week before, he gave that spirit, a spirit in us to be able to communicate yes. to us. Yes. So we give him glory because, thank God. Praise the Lord. We can hear your voice. Yes. And then, we can hear your voice and we know you're talking to us. And then in living with Jesus, it, it says that we glorify God through loving relationships. Um, and that's something that we, everybody's in a relationship with someone, whether it's your mm-hmm. children, your parents, your spouse, your friends, your church family. You, you are in relationship with someone, yeah. right? And so it, it makes the point here that when we display the love of God, we are expressing or glorifying God, right? Mm-hmm. So when we when we loving others which is uh, in the bible is love your love with your neighbor and your god you're like that's the top two right yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were pretty serious yeah um what i loved about this that i got from the living in jesus book is the, what uh, debbie mentioned a minute ago each time we receive from god and we give god to others so we we receive god pours into us we pour out and it's a continual, like a fountain running. Leah mm-hmm. has this beautiful fountain that just so happens her mother gave it to her. <laughs> and so the water, you know, it runs, it pumps, it right? It circulates. Yeah. And so that's kind of the idea in my head I had that mm. as God pours in, the water goes through, yeah. it comes, it mm. circulates back around, right? And lots of things enjoy that water, lizards, butterflies, um, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it says that we complete a healthy relationship cycle. And so here's the thing that's so mind blowing to me. This is the moment I had 
just from my past of being a, a marriage and family therapist is that so many people spend so much money coming out, seeking, searching for a healthy relationship cycle. And as I yeah. shared with them last week is, I mean, I was pretty much born into a very unhealthy relationship cycle. And then I decided to pick it up and carry it along with me for many years and mm. have lots of unhealthy relationships. Yeah. And to think that it, there's such a simple, that it's so simple to God that by loving people and, and not the love that I can do, right? Because from what you heard about my husband, I mean, sometimes I cannot be maybe the most loving, right? Mm-hmm. I can be what? a little, I know it's a shocker. Um, but through God pouring in me and working on the things in me and, and dwelling within me sparks and creates a love that I'm mm. able to pour out to people who I may not really like in the moment, or I might not want to be in relationship with in the moment because we're having human differences. Mm. But he says that is a complete and healthy relationship cycle. Yeah. That's it. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. That, that, that is how we should operate and maintain it, you know, and all there's so many things Leah read and, and gosh, there's so many more things that we can do to be, to be in the state of glorifying God. But I love that it says this one thing through love, this mm-hmm. one thing to receive from him and then to give it back mm-hmm. is a complete healthy relationship model. And if we all did that daily, there'd be a lot of therapists out there who wouldn't be making money. <laughs> <laughs> we would shut yeah. the therapy system down as <laughs> for relationship problems. Um, and it's, it's just so beautiful to, mm. uh, if you notice everything with God seems to be a cycle, you plant a seed, it has a cycle. Yeah. Life has a yeah. cycle. Yeah. The, it's a cycle. It no, is. I can't sing it's, it. We'll can have you to sing trademark it's the cycle it and of pay life? A <laughs> cycle of life. We can't yeah. say it because then we'll have to pay royalties. That's right. So sorry. I was thinking of, uh, uh, Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And I think it kind of sums up what you were saying. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I have to end it here, but it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless, blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So our lives Ooh. can be a living example um, through the and constant re- transformation of Christ. What does he say? He says, it, it is my, say, read it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more right. with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. With, uh, with knowledge and discernment. Filled so, with fruit of righteousness that yeah. comes through Christ. So if you're, if you're walking with Jesus or living in Jesus, as this <laughs> book is entitled that we've been reading, um, you're going to gradually get more and more uh, close to understanding how God wants you to live. It should get easier and easier. Some people, there may be reasons why it doesn't, you mm-hmm. know, um, but it still should be um easier and easier to well, hear, I think of it, hear God's voice. More tools in your tool belt you, is how yeah. I think of it. And right. so you become more discerning. And it talks about that in the next week's chapter with them, which I just finished working on the lesson. And whew, it's good. Um, you know, how do <laughs> I we... can't take any more, Debbie. I know. It's really, <laughs> it's really good. But God, God will teach <laughs> us to discern. Yeah. If we want, if, if we keep our hearts open to him, yep. you know, he will teach us to discern. Um, and when there are decisions we have to make, we can seek him, but everyone has had a time or two where they've not known what they were supposed to do and they've taken it to the father and he doesn't say anything. And so you just wait for him to move. You can either wait for him to move, or if you have to move, sometimes you have to move. You say, God, I'm not sure what I should do, but you know how, you know where my heart is. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to move in this direction. And it's not like, if, I mean, and here's the thing. And like he's not he, standing over you waiting right. to hit you over the head because you right. didn't. <laughs> and I, in, in an application sense, here's the thing, whether you're a new Christian, a growing or a seasoned believer, right? Or, or let's say you're not a believer at all. I like to throw those in there too. It doesn't like wonky upside the head and tomorrow it's all together and there. No, you know, unfortunately. New, new, new believers, new believers. <laughs> well, first off, non-believers just starting to walk down the path of like, who, who is God? Who is this person? And why would I want to be in relationship? Do even that little bit of tilling your soul and digging. Think of moments of awe you've had and consider mm-hmm. the idea that it wasn't just a beautiful mountain, but it was the creation Look at your lab that results. That points you back. That yeah. points you back to God. Just think about it. 
consider what it would look like to think that the very cells in your body were made to glorify a creator, the miracle of life. Um, just entertain it. Just entertain the thought. If you, if you don't believe just Mm -hmm. go down that rabbit trail for once, you know, I mean, what do you have to lose, (laughs) right? If you don't believe you don't believe. So what is this, what is this going to hurt you to, to just think Mm -hmm. that there's nothing there? If it's nothing, it's nothing, but yeah, no, and I was, I was speaking it. to someone about this one time and said, you know, I think there are probably a lot of atheists who don't realize the amount of time they spend obsessing about proving that there isn't a God <laughs> means that they feel like it has to be proven. So just think about that too. Like yeah, there's something there. Yeah. Why do you feel like you have to prove there isn't a God? Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it, is it because there's enough evidence to prove there is and we got to go against it? Just, just something to consider. I mean, everyone's in different stages of right. this development, but just well, something to because consider. Because if we accept that there's a God, then we accept that there is, that Con- we have so, some well, sort of dethrone. responsibility right. there's, there's to uh, yeah. respond to that. Yeah. We have to take that humanistic view now and check it at the door, which Dethrone is self. Yeah. very hard. Yeah. And then like for new Christians, um, you know, seeking out discipleship and mentorship, like finding people, if you're new, that can help pour into you and help you understand, like pretty much what we're doing here is, you know, somebody who helps you kind of dig into and find more at the pace at what you're, where you're at and what you're looking into. And the new fire of a new believer is the most beautiful, catching, Mm -hmm. joyful thing to see. So share it, share Mm -hmm. what, share what God did. Even if the people around you look at you like you have 15 heads, like let them see a You're on the right track. Yeah. yeah the let right them tra- see that it, <laughs> somebody who was, who was hopeless has hope now or yeah. who is joyless has joy. Like that, that glorifies God. Are we, the, our transformation, whether it's just the initial acceptance of Christ to the whole lifelong transformation we go through as we grow, it all can glorify God. So then if you're a growing believer, pretty much keeping on the path of deepening your relationship, I'm going to tell you what, again, I've been a Christian since I was six years old. Yes, I, I rode the line many, many, many times. Um, but I can tell you that even the things I learned as a child, the things that were foundational, the things that I knew, they look and they are so much different now in the stage of life I'm in because I am making the effort to step in and look deeper, to go past just a Sunday sermon or what I learned from Bible Mm -hmm. study or Mm -hmm. I'm a Sunday school kid. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So just digging in more. And even if you heard one concept today and you say that thing this week, I want to go look at it. That thing I want to think about that this week. I want to ask God to open my eyes. I mean, it's, it's nothing you're probably not already doing prayer Bible study, fasting, mm-hmm. listening to worship music. Maybe this week catch a glimpse of something and and see how does that thing <clears throat> glorify God in a way you never thought it glorified God. Yeah, I'm thinking of that um, 1 Corinthians 13 um, at the end in, in um, verse 9. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. And when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I re- uh, reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me, thinking this idea that there has to be constant growth. And as you grow, you learn new things and you see things differently. Then he says in verse 12, now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now we know in part, and then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. So it's this idea that the, the process of pursuing and, and even revisiting things you already knew, but you knew them as a child, whether it's a physical child or mm-hmm. a spiritual child or an emotional child. Honestly, sometimes we can have full grown adults that are emotional children. Think that the, the live active word of well, God still like, speaks. Was it Hebrews that... Where, yes, where he re- Paul basically I, Well, we don't know who wrote Hebrews, actually, I don't that, think, but... He, Paul rebukes the... Um, them because they're still stuck on he says on yeah he says you should be milk. teaching by now why are you still and i think i as a message out there for anyone listening that might be have been a christian for a long time and has never really progressed in your faith um dive in you know dive in and 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 think about this these thought these things that we've been uh, talking about who is God? What is He? What can He do for me? What did He intend for me right from the start? And then I love this this cycle, this process of 
basically walking and glorifying God, you know, when, and you can apply it to thoughts and actions. When mm-hmm. you ha- receive a thought from the spirit process, you know, process that thought, think about it, pray, try to hear God's direction. If you're not sure, talk to a trusted mentor. Right. Read yeah. your word. Don't just read. This is my pet peeve. Don't <laughs> just read little one one verse Bible Bible devotionals. Sometimes you can do that, but also read books of the Bible, and 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 read them and try to think. Don't just read it to get through it and check that off your list. Read it to understand it. Read it to really think. What was he trying to teach us here? You know, so that's what I just encourage you. Don't stay as a baby in your faith because it's so much more powerful and wonderful to live um, and growing it day by day, learning how to discern, learning how to walk, learning how to hear God's voice. Um, well, and it feels so beautiful and so wonderful yeah, to fulfill yeah. that purpose that God gave us back in Eden. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. to we'll walk never with be him, satisfied know him. in life unless we're understand him. him. Yeah. That's, that's where the glory comes to fruition. You and know? then not to leave out seasoned believers, those who probably think they've seen it all, heard it all. And boy, we just heard this. And how could y'all just be catching on to this? <laughs> it is so important for seasoned believers to pass on their faith and their yes. wisdom to the next yes. generation. There mm-hmm. is a lost generation. There's a confused generation yeah. and not just one. There's a few of them. We need you to remember that you might be old in age, but your spirit is young in Christ. Still, you're not done. You're yeah. not. God is not no. finished with There's you. There's wisdom, insight, power. And we can't. We can't give this world over to the power of evil. You know, we have to stand up for the power of God and um, you know, shine light. <laughs> shine our light. You know, don't hide your lamp under a basket. Even you know? if your lamp is an antique. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Still an it's still that's shines. covering up the light. That's and, right. then, and then again, for everybody, just to remember what we, the verse we've been saying is whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Um, I love what he said, what uh, Thomas says and all to the glory of God. He says, love your wife, but love her less than God who gave her to you. Mm. Enjoy your wealth, but far less than the God who placed it in your hand. Delight yourself in your children, but not more than you delight in the Lord who entrusted them in your care. Work hard to develop huge, glorious thoughts of God, Mm. thoughts that are um, commiserated with the revelation of his glory in Jesus. Work hard to see what is there and be stunned by it. Mm. Hmm. Be overwhelmed by the greatness and grace. Of the God who did not spare his own son's life, but has delivered him up for you and has promised that with him, he will also give you everything you need. Then love and delight yourself in him supremely. That's perfect. That's great. So you want to know how, how to glorify God? That says it. There you go. I like be stunned by God. Be stunned by God. (laughs) I always say that shock us with your awesomeness. (laughs) Show off. I'll ask him. Show off. Show show off. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> There's a lot to see. So this see. so this week, guys, we want to challenge you to um to think about what does glorifying God mean? Like what do you what are your thoughts? What are your what did you grow up believing? How did we challenge that today? Did we give you something new to think about? Um mm-hmm. because glorifying God is is done by showing the worth and value of the Lord by the way that we live. Our talk, our relationships, our choices and our desires must all be shaped by a genuine delight in God above all things. Mm-hmm. And for this to happen, we must see and appreciate the infinite worth of all that God is for us and does for us. Because the Christian life is not a charade. It is not a call to pretend to to be big by saying and doing the right things. Mm. It is a call to see and believe the truth and to order our lives accordingly. And so this week, we just pray over you guys to take a look at where your seed is planted. Mm. And if your seed's not planted well... Maybe it's in some of that different soul that the, um, mm-hmm. that the talents, the, not the talents, the that parable, the parable the sower, talks yeah. about. You have an opportunity this week to go do some tilling, mm-hmm. do some digging, and plant your seed this week. Yeah. Plant your seed. And then let's just see what God does with it. Well, and if you ask him to show up and show his glory, even in the most mundane tasks, he'll do it. Mm-hmm. He does mm-hmm. it that way. Because yeah. he is faithful. Yep. And he likes to show it. He likes us to know it. Yep. 
because it points it if you haven't got it by now it because everything <laughs> points back to him when we have these moments in life these unthinkable big moments the happy moments the joyous moments the hard moments there is something there mm. to capture and pull you back to him Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. In all things. Mm-hmm. So our prayer for you again is that this week you just sit in this, maybe think on it. If you have questions, you can always uh, hit us up at www.steppingforwardfwd.org. We will have um, the different <laughs> Piper and uh, the, the books and the articles. We'll stick it all in there so you can go check out some of the resources we checked out. Um, any last thoughts, ladies? No, oh, I think we summed it up there. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory right. to God. It's, it's time that uh, we plant some seeds, guys, and that we, um, and that this week, we give glory to God. Hey, y'all. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Southern Soul Chats. We appreciate your support and hope you found this discussion enriching. We invite you to step forward by sharing, rating, and subscribing to our podcast. As always, you will find additional resources in the description of today's episode. If you'd like to support our mission and help us to continue passing this forward through our podcast, consider donating today at www.steppingforward.org. Your support helps us continue sharing the love of God. And for some, this may be all the Jesus they hear. Connect with us on social media for updates and more inspiring content. Until next time, keep stepping forward.